Salutations, one and all. It's my reaction review to Ruby Volume 8, Episode 4, Fault. John Ren Yang's pursuit of mysterious new Grim result in unexpected complications. Ru Weiss and Blake find a new place to lay low. Cinder receives an ultimatum. Yeah, Cinder's probably gonna end up betraying Emerald. And maybe Neo as well. Somebody's definitely gonna end up getting betrayed. This could definitely be a good chance for Emerald to be burned, kicked out, seemingly killed, but then comes back later on because she somehow managed to survive. That's uh, something. The time has come for Emerald to realize that Cinder does not freaking care about her. I mean, seriously. Definitely looking forward to this. Last chapter was absolutely freaking amazing. Last chapter is the only one that focused on one group, but I think they did a really good job of it. You know, everyone in the group had their own moment to shine. Blake and Ruby actually talked to one another. That's super rare. Nora opened up about Ren and then hit stuff really freaking hard. Love that. And quite frankly, I love her new uh, lightning scars all across her body. I think they really work for her character design. Weiss even opened up a little bit about her sister. Ruby's semblance was finally explained. Finally. By Penny, no less. And Penny, uh, Penny just really shined last episode. You know, really showing off her maiden powers as she fought against the freaking Aesop's essentially by herself. Almost to a draw there. Almost. All right, so let's get into this. Okay, so you're just laughing your butt off while in prison. That's such a Robin thing to do. Definitely wasn't expecting this to be the start of it. Though I am liking... <laughs> Love it. Really? Hey! She won! No, you just mope and stare at Clover's little charm. Yeah, everyone really screwed up in that fight. Really? You really could have. I have analyzed that fight. I've gone over it again and again, and literally every single person there did the absolute worst thing they could do. Clover could have teamed up with Crow to take out Tyrion, and then they could have dealt with their problems. Robin could have, you know, not started a fight in the helicopter. Any of them could have kept a better eye on Tyrion. Crow could have, you know, not teamed up with Tyrion. They all made really, really bad mistakes in that fight. You know, that is actually really true. Clover's good luck semblance basically canceled out Crow's bad luck semblance, so the two of them could be together without Crow essentially destroying his life. That's, you know, the entire reason why Crow works alone, because uh, his semblance would just cause them pain otherwise. I have so many questions about his time as part of a team. Hey, reference to the opening. Ooh, I feel like that's about uh, summer right there. Oh, Mara's looking. Ooh. Yeah. Really? That could just, you know, answer all their questions. She really doesn't. Yeah, that's about right. Thank you. Thank you. The mayor is the voice of reasoning. That's never a good sign. I'm really hoping Mara's going to end up switching sides at some point this volume. <laughs> Almost. Is, oh, breaking down. Yeah, I don't think it's meant to work in the ice and snow like that. Uh, can John fly? Oh, Ren's going to fail and it's going to be really sad and depressing. Okay, that's sort of like flight. I'm pretty sure it can just cut off its own leg or it's going to smash you into the side of the hill. Yeah, that's so, John. Even when he does something cool, it's immediately canceled out. <laughs> oh, Ren, this is just not your volume. Okay, that helps. That is definitely going to keep slowing him down at least a little bit. Don't forget, though, this thing is intelligent. Your usual tactics aren't going to work against it. Also, why do you think Yang's uh, line about uh, which one of us could fly is going to be, you know, result in someone actually flying by the end of this volume? Oh, no. Yep, I figured that was going to happen. It can control other Grim! Yay! Yeah, yeah, it did. John's doing a very good job, I have to say. Despite his John-ness, he's still pretty impressive. 
Right. You know, Ozpin, now would be a really good time for you to wake up and just offer a helping hand. Oh, of course. Yep. I'm glad they're using the centipede grims again. Those are like one of the coolest design grims I've seen. I mean, besides the bloodhound they're currently chasing after, but besides him, they look amazing. I love just the way they move. Oh, that was cool. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was really cool. And there's something right in front of them. Yep, it's a cliff. Yep, that's a cliff. Okay. Uh, I went back to save them instead of going after Ospen. Oh, and now they're invisible. Okay, that's helpful. You know, looking back, it might have been a smarter idea to launch Yang up on top. Oh, I guess Yang couldn't have used... Oh, maybe if they gave Yang... Seriously! Seriously! This is the safe place they choose to hide. This is where they don't think Ironwood will think to look for them. Seriously! Yeah, honestly, that's probably for the best. Ironwood would never think they go there. Yeah, thank you. We're in. Okay. Things are already bad enough after what you did to father. Yeah, father did a lot of bad things. Our family has a reputation. What reputation? Seriously, what reputation? That's Ruby. Aw. Alright, well he's not being entirely awful. <laughs> oh, I love it! I love it. Yeah, just stay out of our way. Just stay out of our way. I mean, I don't suppose your mother is like a doctor or something. Has some healing expertise. Oh, God. I love that Blake and Ruby are actually talking this volume. It, it's something we needed so freaking badly. And yes, they are definitely getting a video at the end of this volume. They are definitely getting a video. Oh... Yeah, I can't really get a hold of her since they're too far out. Oh, they are in trouble. They're basically going to freeze to death at this point. Okay, so those were the unexpected uh, complications they came across. Interesting they're going to bring the... Oh. If their aura reaches zero, then they'll freeze to death. Yeah, Ren's just very annoyed. Very, very annoyed. Very angry. Jean, he, you, you're his captain. Shouldn't you be saying something to him? Wow, Ren is in such a mood. Hey, what is your deal? All right. Well, these two have ever actually talked before? Down a uh, the technically, the lady with the giant robot took down the Leviathan. All you did was, you know, hold it down. And, you know, you've actually lost the lamp already. So not a lot of uh, good arguments you got on your side, Yang, here. And then we lost it. Yes, you did. No fair enough, fair enough, Ren. Oh, yeah, you are. Oh! Whoa! Wait. What? Uh, did Ren know that? I mean, I knew Pira knew that, but did Ren know that? I know, I'm 100% I'm certain that Ozpin knows that. Seriously, when did Ren know about that? Basically, yes. I mean, Ren made some very good points there. Don't panic. You're going to be okay. I don't think you are. I really don't think you are. Yes, this is as basically as bad as it can get. How exactly is this going to be okay? Oh God, I love the way it's just sitting like that, presenting a bird to its master. Really? That's a very good question. <laughs> oh, love it. Hey, you learned his name. That was nice of you. Yeah, th that's the, the relic, the one beneath beacon. It's the relic of choice. Uh, essentially free will, I think. So if she gets that, will she be able to strip people of their free will, take control of them completely? 
If that's the case, that is absolutely 100% of the relic that she should not get her hands on. The lamp is all out of questions. <laughs> oh, please, even I could tell you're lying there. Okay! Rainbow color torture! Uh, Oz, what, what part of this is it's gonna be okay? Also, what exactly was that? Was, was that, I guess, magic? Uh, that was bad. That was a whole lot of bad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she basically saying you're just like Oscar. Oz Ozma. Oh, God. Come on, Hazel. Seriously? Hazel, you're beating up a 10 year old kid. You are beating up a 10 year old kid. You can't still think you're the good guy here. Oh. Oh. This is just so disturbing. Right now, it's easy just to let Ironwood destroy himself. Wow! Wow, wow. Even Cinder is afraid of the Bloodhound. That's just really showing what a true threat this thing is. And yeah, you know, that's assuming that Salem can only make one of these things. Imagine if she could make like a dozen, a hundred of these. It's basically the end of humanity. So, yes. <laughs> she truly does fear her, and I love that. Though she definitely does not believe that. She's biding her time until she finds a way to take her out. Maybe when she think maybe she thinks that when she gets all the maiden powers for herself, she will take control. Oh, this is such a bad idea. Such, such a bad idea. Oh, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! I love Neo's movements. Oh, Emerald! Such a bad idea! Such a, such a bad idea! Yeah, John knows quite a bit about that. He's trying to hide his, you know, inadequacy when he first got into Beacon, and as a result of it, he essentially became a slave to, what's his name, Cardigan. Well, that's convenient. Yay. Yeah, I love that Yang is basically a mechanic. I mean, she worked on her own bike, so this does seem within her wheelhouse. Ruby? Uh. I love that they're fighting this volume. I may mean, hate it, but just the drama it really lets, you know, more happen between two of them. Oh! She wasn't talking about Ruby. She was talking about Blake. That they do. So I'm going to assume we're going to see something very, very bad right in the horizon. Yep. Something very, very bad. There we go. <laughs> something under the ice. Of course that's where we're going to end up, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Alright, so it was a good episode. We got some interesting moments between Robin and Crow, them bonding a little over their time in prison. I'm very, very curious what's going to happen between the two of them. I feel like they're going to ally, you know, take an Ironwood eventually down the road, but... I'm also curious, you know, Harriet and Marrow have this whole weird thing with them. I'm, I'm still thinking Marrow is going to end up betraying Ironwood. He's going to realize he's on the wrong side. I mean, even Harriet at this point is making these weird leaps in logic to justify what she's saying to herself. I mean, they have a literal polygraph machine in the cell right next to them. They could just ask her, and she would tell them everything they need to know, that they are completely on the wrong side, but Harriet's almost afraid of those answers, afraid of knowing that she's fighting for the wrong team, that her hatred is misplaced, because then, you know, what's she gonna do? What's left for her if she can't hate? The battle on the bike was absolutely freaking amazing. I loved seeing Ren, uh, you know, basically tie himself to a grim, get smacked around this entire episode. You know, he needs to go smack around to set his head straight after all he's been through. Loved, loved, loved the fact that this giant, monstrous bloodhound can call for backup. <laughs> oh, that's terrifying. That is truly, utterly, utterly terrifying as we see the centipede grims again. Love them last volume, love them against volume. They just look so cool the way they move. Ren had to come in and save the day after they almost, you know, after they actually did drive right off a cliff, which really is not helping with his mood, we saw later on. He's very, very angry, and I think there's a considerable portion of the fan base who are going to agree with him here. You know, Team Ruby, they keep making mistakes, they keep screwing things up, and they just keep making things worse. 
Uh, for the most part, I mean, they have done some good. I'm not going to deny that, but they've done so much bad that it's really, really starting to, you know, uh, get to Ren's head. He's having a lot of problems with it. He's having a lot of issues with it. The fact they just, you know, keep racking up the losses. And then for him to bring up the fact that John cheated his way into Beacon. I mean, seriously, how does he even know that? I'm still a little confused about that. But uh, he's really just, you know, throwing his anger at everybody and looks like next episode we're going to, you know, he's going to have to team up with the rest of them to find some way somehow to get over his funk, get over his mood and take out some big grim that's going to emerge from under the ice. <gasps> Super excited for that. I'm also a really big fan of the parallels here. I mean, I mean, it feels a lot like the same thing that John went through. You know, with the whole cardigan thing when he was being bullied, when he was being blackmailed, he refused Pyrrha's help, he refused her training because he didn't think he was worthy. He thought, you know, he had to do it by himself. That was the only way he could prove himself as a true huntsman. Now, same thing with Ren. He feels, well, not just himself, but all of them, he feels, you know, they aren't worthy to be huntsmen at this point. And because of that, they shouldn't be here. Because of that, they shouldn't be the one making decisions. They shouldn't be the one deciding who lives and who dies. They shouldn't be the ones deciding the fate of Atlas and Mantle. They shouldn't be the ones deciding that's worth it to risk fighting against Salem, even if they don't think they can win. I also don't think that Ironwood should be one making that choice because he's gotten Coco Banana Pants. <laughs> oh, I freaking love this. I freaking love this. I freaking love this. Weiss went back home. I mean, the description said, you know, they were going to go find a safe place to hide. Never in my wildest imagination did I think it'd be here. I mean, like I said, I don't even think Ironwood would think that they'd actually come here. And Whitley, you know, wasn't overwhelmingly terrible right here. I mean, you know, the whole what you did to father thing. I mean, he essentially aided and abetted a murder just so he could win an election and make more money. Yeah, I really don't think you can blame Weiss for mother locking herself in the room. I'm actually very curious about her and want, definitely want to see more of her. I mean, the opening definitely seemed to imply that Whitley and Willow would play some sort of role in this volume if they're, you know, in the opening. So I'm... Curious to see more about that. I love Ruby coming in, you know, playing peacekeeper between the two of them. <laughs> so adorable. And you know, Whitley, even, he's like, all right, I'll help you. What do you want me to do? He was willing to do something. I mean, not a lot, but at least a bare minimum to help them here. And why it's just... <laughs> oh, I feel like she's been wanting to say that to him for so very, very long. I do think things are going to turn around. I do think he's going to end up helping them down the road somehow, some way. And I hope Nora's okay. Ruby? Also love that we got more Blake and Ruby talk time this volume. And then, then, we, then we got Rand's whole temper tantrum. And yeah, this was... Just love the way the Bloodhound's sitting, presenting Oscar to his master. Love that. Then we get some uh, magic torture going on, which seems rather painful. I'm not really sure how Hazel is planning on inducing... More pain than that, but it feels almost like this was, you know, his reward for backing up Salem. Like, all right, I'll work for you, but when we eventually get our hands on Ozpin, I want to take over. I want to be the one that gets to punish him personally. I mean, I am hoping, beyond hope, that there is some way, somehow, where Hazel's going to end up switching sides. Hazel's going to end up, you know, joining Ozpin, because there is no way his sister would want him to help, you know, murder an entire city. One of the largest cities in the world. That's, no, he's making very bad choices here. In fact, his choices are so bad, so stupid, I have long since theorized that Hazel is like a deep cover spy and that all of this is just part of his, you know, plan to somehow, some way, find a way to betray her and stop her down the road. Very, very unlikely, but maybe. Seriously. I freaking love that even Cinder is terrified of the Bloodhound. That's just showing what a true monster he is. Alright, so yeah, next episode, uh, I guess, I guess we're gonna see Cinder reunite with Penny, uh, Maiden vs. Maiden battle on Amityville Arena, at least until Ironwood takes control of her. That's gonna be interesting. Uh, Ren, Yang's group are gonna end up fighting the Ice Cream. Hopefully, you know, Ren can get over the funk in his head. And, uh, what else is there? Oh yeah, uh, Weiss has to deal with her brother and mother. I'm super excited for all that. They really lost this chapter, set up a freaking amazing storyline next week, and I just can't wait for it. But yeah, let me think all that down below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and like this video. And until then, peace!